The flying reptiles belong to the great middle period of geological history. It is just possible that all the fables and myths of dragons may have originated in the finding of the petrified limb bones of an antediluvian monster in some ancient cave. But it is curious to observe that wings are always associated with the forelimbs of the typical dragon. Even those fabled monsters of oriental antiquity, the Chinese dragon and the Japanese dragon, belong to the common stock. The idea of a flying animal, or rather of the larger pedestrian animals being endowed with the added power of flight, has in many ages exercised the human imagination and excited man's freest inventive fancies. Whence we have derived our artistic conceptions of flying horses, of winged bulls and winged lions, even of conventional angels and cherubim and other mystic messengers between earth and heaven. The Pteranodon was a great finger-winged reptile of the Chalk Age, whose leathery, featherless wings, measuring 18 feet from tip to tip, must have made high heaven hideous to behold. Its wing fingers were real bone and supported the membrane worked by muscles in the crest at the back of the head. The jaws were toothless and formed a beak. The general structure of the animal seeming to indicate that it fed on fish. There were many varieties of these flying dragons, some large and some small, some short-tailed and others with long tails. Imagine a gigantic frog with the wings of an enormous bat and a monstrous beak, and some faint conception may be formed of the actual living creatures from which the idea of the fabled dragon has in all probability been derived. Of these weird prehistoric monsters, the range in hideous and grotesque ugliness, if not in the terrifying hugeness of their size, is by no means exhausted in the few named here. It is undoubtedly in these two attributes of unutterable hideousness and ferocious enormity that they have for ages been at the back of men's minds in the shaping of the conventional dragon of myth and legend. Thus, the poet Tennyson speaks of the dragons of the prime that tear each other in their slime. Yet no good evidence could be produced to prove the memory of tradition connecting the fabled and imaginary dragon with the real and actual animals of geologic periods. The hypothesis, however, is one which has received support from the imaginative and artistic. And it is really curious to notice that in some of the inventions of the Middle Ages, the grotesque creatures carved or painted as dragons reproduced with strange faithfulness some of the features of these extinct creatures which had disappeared from the face of the earth ages before man appeared upon it.